It's KMFM. It's Ben hanging out with you this evening. And on the show tonight is Switch, Disco, Dan, Nikos. Thank you for joining us, lads. How are you both doing? All good. No worries at all. Thanks for having us. Very well. Thank you very much. Now, I want to know a bit more about you guys, because I feel like everything I try and find out about you is either on your TikTok, following your behind the scenes videos. But I feel like we need to build up your Wikipedia page a little bit, because so far, (laughs) if you go on there, all we know is that you guys met on an island in Greece. Uh, Apart from that, there's not an awful lot. So uh, please, guys, tell me a little bit more about the story of how you guys met and uh, starting to work together to form Switch Disco. Uh, we're very elusive, you see, Ben. That's why we uh, we don't give too much away. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, apart from what you already know from our, our Wikipedia page, which is true now, by which the way. yeah, our Wikipedia our Wikipedia got hacked. We think at some point someone put some uh, false information. On that. Oh no! What did it say? What did it say? We think. Uh, oh, you don't want. You don't want to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I was going to say like brothers of Calvin <laughs> Harris came together, kept it in the family. Now big DJs or <laughs> nothing like that. Yeah. So we we met uh, through mutual friends. Uh, uh, we worked in Zanti uh, a few years back. Then Nikos came over to the UK and he then started uh, playing the, the British uh, DJ circuit. Then we kind of reached the end of our journey as, as residents. We had a similar kind of vision of where we wanted, we wanted to be as, as artists. We got together and here we are. <laughs> Best of friends and colleagues. I mean, how how much better could it be? Um, Nikos, do you have do you have Greek heritage as well? Are you are you from Zante or? Yeah, yeah, born and raised born and raised in Zante, and that's that's actually where I met Dan and our manager uh, Danny uh, out there, and um, it's been it's been actually a, a big part of my life, Zante, because I've been doing seasons DJing out there since I was 13 and then 2011 I met the guys and I started coming over to the UK as Dan mentioned and um, yeah it's, it's been a great journey um, no, no heritage nothing from the UK just came over here and kind of stayed for a bit Nikos is as Greek as you get yeah you yeah doesn't doesn't get any more Greek. much Greek well I hate to out Greek you <clears throat> Sorry, Dan. You can go and sit over in the corner if you want for a bit. That was Greeks. That was Greeks. Take care of this. I'm a quarter Greek, but I tell everyone that I'm half Greek just because I feel pathetic when I'm like, "Yeah, I'm a quarter Greek." It's my mum's mum, and that's the line of the family. So yeah. So I mean, ultimately, we could we could have a full conversation right now in Greek, Nikos. Of Hold course. Hold on we... a second. What's what's your favourite food? Greek well. Food? This this is where we need to have conversations because <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I mean ultimately I am just a feta boy at heart. So when I come home from Greece, all I've got is a suitcase full of feta. I've not got any clothes anymore. Um, but every time my friends ask me to bring them back baklava, and I'm like, "Oh, nice!" Yeah, but but it's not Greek. It's not like. Nah, it's- well, it's a grey area. Some say it's Greek, some say it's... It's a quarter, like it's, it's a quarter Greek, Ben. But, yeah. but it's, it's kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> I love some that. say Greek, Greek started it, or the Turkey side, and then he came here. No one really knows, to be honest. What I love about that is it's a grey area, like being a quarter it's, Greek, Ben, is all I took exactly. away from that. And and the rest exactly. of it doesn't... Cheers, Dan, for that. I appreciate that, mate. I mean, <laughs> I, I do... It I've is a, it's my boast, you know? I've got an idea, Ben. I think me and you should do another podcast about Greek food. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. We could, do you know what I had over the weekend? Oh, I forget the name now of the pastry, but um, oh, this is going to sound really boring for you guys. But there was a Hawking Summer Fate on, right, which is close to where I live. And it's one of those typicals outside a community centre, like big field, big bouncy castle, uh, some questionable singers and bands on the stage. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then food trucks everywhere and randomly a steam train going around which i don't know how that happened on grass but still uh and one of the guys that was there was selling like cypriot food and and greek food it's like halloumi bread it was amazing uh they had like freshly made hummus there as well and 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 one of the things that i had was um it was called a greek i can't remember you'll be able to tell me it was a greek pastry with spinach and feta and it was panakopita that is it that is it oh it's so good oh I literally was eating it. I was like, it's like being in Greece. It's brilliant. <laughs> this interview has taken a wild turn. <laughs> I mean, we're just talking about food. <laughs> guys, I had an interview with 220 Kid a couple of weeks ago, and all we spoke about was his dad looking for a stepmom. Um, and that was literally the oh, 15 thought, minutes. So this is. <laughs> Soon, what a guy, what a guy. Yeah. What a guy. Soon we're going to be taken off of all the radio interview lists, but hey, we keep it going for now. Uh, but yeah, no, no, Greek food, Greece, amazing place. Uh, Dan, by the sounds of it, you enjoyed your time in, in Zanti as well. You formed this partnership, you started working together. 
bringing it back in here. Come on, professionalism, Ben. Uh, the big break, though, was everything, wasn't it? Your track, everything. It was used in the opening scene of Love Island. I think that went, went kind of viral at the time. Were either of you guys fans of the programme, or did you just remember your phone going crazy? That people, oh, I've just heard your song. It's on Love Island. Listen, but I, I applied uh, three or four times. They didn't let me on, so I've got <sighs> a bit of uh, a bit of taste in my mouth about the. Uh, See, <laughs> Dan, if you was a quarter Greek, you would have been in, mate. I uh, did it straight on, straight on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it was it was great. Like it was it was weird because it was it was that was actually our first release. Everything. Um, so we we had a, a massive boost from from Love Island, as you can imagine. Um, it got the song in in front of so many people, but it was our first release, so we we weren't used to anything else. So we didn't have anything else to compare it to. But yeah, it was it was it was great to be used. Like I think the the, the producer when he he heard the song first of all he was just like this is Love Island like it's literally what it sounds like, um, and they've been really good to us since they've they've supported our other releases as well. So um, yeah, we've we've got a lot to thank uh, the guys there for for sure. Because it was a minute or so, wasn't it, until you followed it up with React. So can you remember what that time was like in between? Were you just so busy doing doing live shows, or were you sitting on music at the time? Then then suddenly got in with Edda Henderson. He was like, right, okay, this is. Got to be this got to be the second one. I think it was a weird time back then. Back then, even before everything, um, Mm -hmm. it took like a year for that to come out, and then we had React for well, we we started React for quite a while, and that took a long time to come around as well. Uh, I think it took like nine months to be released to to get to the final product. Yeah, so nothing's really straightforward. Um, But yeah, I think it took us nine months to to release React. Mm And what are you guys like with with that? Because it sounds like it's quite a slow process up from like four idea to getting someone in the studio to producing the record. Um, and then by the time it's released, I know you guys are in the studio today. Do, are you okay with things being a bit slower? Or do you like things like ramped up? Like, I've got this idea. I want to do it now. Let's get it out there. It's, it's something that we've we've had to get used to quite quickly. I mean, React was only our, our second release. Um, so we're now on our, we've just released our, our eighth single, um, but we're still relatively new to, to releasing music. Um, so we've had to get get used to the, the behind the scenes business and, and politics that goes involved, uh, that's involved in releasing music. And there's so many people involved, there's different labels, there's different management. It's, it's really not a straightforward procedure. Um, and also because we we heavily use samples in our releases as well, that sometimes takes a long time to to get across the line. But yeah, we we just get we just get used to it, and we just we just keep creating. We keep creating as, as much music as we can. We're we're sitting on a load of music at the minute, um, a load of ideas. So yeah, we we've we've got used to it. We've got used to to all that goes behind the scenes. Yeah, the biggest artists. This is the hit list. KMFM. This is the hit list. KMFM. You've now worked on two tunes, and I suppose spent hours in the studio with Ella Henderson. Um, what's it been like working with her? Because what I'd like to know is, is she as crazy in real life as she is on social media? Because social media, she just goes for it, doesn't she? She Ella Ella's great. She's she's lovely, and um, she she's amazing to work with because you go into the studio and she nails everything she she sings pretty much. And as a person as well, she's super fun to work with, and we'll have jokes. And it's just it, it's just great. She's just great. And on your next song, you've got another wicked voice in UK dance music, Charlotte Haining. Uh, when did you first hear of her? So we actually first heard of her uh, through the song she did with Shane Codd. Um, that's when we first heard her voice um, because she does a lot of, of drum and bass normally and that was one of the few uh, dance records that she's done. So that was more in our world. Um, and we loved her voice from back then. We, we did one previous session with her before. So the session that we did for I Found You was actually our second session with her. And she's incredible. Like she's so, so like just naturally talented um such a lovely person to work with as well she's great and charlotte haining is one of the voices you'll hear on i found you uh of course a new track from switch disco uh, it's featuring felix as well tell me about how that song came together guys because you've got a couple of collabs on this one so how did you manage to pull the pieces and, and create that jigsaw we brought it up in one of the sessions and in that session specifically and then Charlotte and the rest of the team they were like oh we we love this and then a couple of hours later I found you we was there <laughs> love that I love that and is it cool that you can go out and about you can test these samples you can play these massive gigs and then you can be like do you know what yeah actually that could work on a 
on a song today. Is, is that quite a nice part, nice part of the job? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that we actually learned. So when, when we first started doing these studio sessions, we, we kind of had a bit of imposter syndrome, to be honest, because we're working with some incredible songwriters, producers, vocalists, and we kind of, it took us a while to realise our, our kind of worth within those sessions. Um, but what we do has is, have is, is years and years of experience of what music works on dance floors. Um, so we bring that knowledge into the sessions and, and part of that is the, the kind of uh, the dance anthems that we've been able to sample um, and bring to these sessions. Um, so yeah, the, the the Felix one, as Nikos said, it, we've we've been playing that. It's been working. That synth has been working on dance floors since we've been DJing. Um, so yeah, to be able to to get that top line with the writers we worked with and Charlotte was yeah pretty incredible. It's a wicked song. I found you. Uh, Switch Disco, Charlotte Haining and Felix. It's such an anthem, so go check that out. And, and just listening to you there, uh, Dan, talking about anthems and also a little bit about uh, earlier on being the sample kings at the moment. Uh, one of the things that I love that you guys do on TikTok is when two anthems collide. I love that. Oh, yes. How did you come Thank up with that list, that list of songs? I mean, a couple I watched earlier, Swedish House Mafia, Don't You Worry Child, With Otto Knows, Million Voices. I mean, sounds, yeah, all right, these two massive anthems, but to put them together, Bicep <laughs> Glue and Soul Searcher Can't Get Enough. I mean, have you got a list that you're just ticking things off? or No, it's kind of like, like Dan just said, because we've been playing um, music for years and our passion has always been dance music. I mean, when we were resident, we used to play every genre, we used to play 80s, 90s, R&B, hip hop dance garage everything don't forget garage man yeah yeah yeah, garage yeah um we used to play everything but our true passion has always been dance and house music so we've we have all of these years of like ideas of oh that would be awesome and that would be awesome and what if we put this over this and like it really comes naturally and easily for us there's there's also a lot of trial and error involved like we've we've got catalogs of of these anthems and there's 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 stuff that might be in the same key and, and they don't necessarily work. So there is a lot of hours of, of trial and error before, uh, you know, we, we present the final mashup. Um, but yeah, the, it's, it's kind of years and years and years worth, as Nikos just said, of building up catalogues of anthems and then, yeah, just chucking them together. I oh, see, because that's what I was going to say. I, I see, I'd really nerd out of that. I, I would love to watch a DJ just like do drops that don't work together. Or like songs that don't... <laughs> oh, it'd be brilliant. Or like go the other There's way. Like, <laughs> there, is, there is loads, yeah. Oh, go the other way, like things that could never be together. So for example, like TV theme tunes. Try mix a SpongeBob SquarePants theme tune with the Bluey theme tune. Never work. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. This is how awful yeah. it's... Uh, do you remember back in the day there was that... Oh, you, Dan, you might remember this. Do you remember the 50 Cent um, in the club and uh, Thomas the Tank Engine mashup? Have you ever heard that? Thomas the Tank Engine is probably one of the greatest uh, cartoons ever made. <laughs> Uh, and also the theme tune is also one of the greatest theme tunes ever. Uh, yes, I do remember it. it, it just, and and consider, considering I'm, I'm only 21 years old, I can't, I can't, I don't really know how I remember it, but I do. Yeah, but it, it doesn't work. Like, yeah, everyone, yeah. I remember, so I'm, I'm 30 this year, everyone, when I went to secondary school, so I must have been like 15, 14, 15, had that on their little slide up Samsung phones. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, why? Why do we have, <laughs> it doesn't work. Thankfully, that mashup didn't reach Greece, so I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Didn't make, it, didn't make it across the water. Didn't make it across the water. Well, look, guys, all I'm saying is coming in 2025, it's Switch Disco featuring 50 Cent and the Thomas the Tank Engine theme tune. Let's make it sound good, yeah? We'll, we'll get on the phone. We'll speak to you. <laughs> well, look, guys, I'm loving the stuff you're doing. Um, this was so much fun. Uh, thank you for jumping on. And look, if you ever need someone to, you know, like get involved with uh, with the, when two anthems collide, you know, just, just pick up the barcode, you know. We will do. <laughs> Axel F, Crazy Frog and Cy Gangnam Style. Yeah, I think that go down the street. That could work. That could work. Yeah, could work. yeah, yeah you're never, you're never going to ask, are you? Yeah, never going to We'll let ask. you know, Ben. We'll let you know. All right, cheers, guys. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Switch Disco. Cheers, boys. Thanks Thank for having so us, much. Ben. Nice one.